Romans 7th chapter and uh, filth through the 7th verse. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. And the Lord touched my heart on this subject of the last four words here in the seventh verse. Thou shalt not covet. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, King, King, and Lord, Lord, Savior, and friend, Almighty Amen. God, we praise thy holy name. Jehovah Jared, the great provider, Jehovah Rapha, the great healer, Jehovah Shalom, God is peace. We praise thy holy name and thank you for the Holy Spirit, comforter, lead, guide, all truth. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, shedding our precious Amen. blood, dying in our place, saving our soul, washing us in the blood of the Lamb, putting our Holy Spirit word in our hearts, leading God to all truth. Amen. Lord, help me preach this message tonight, the spirit of truth. Amen. And Lord, may the congregation of brothers and sisters Amen. in Christ help us each and every one receive and learn yes. from it. In the name of Jesus, we pray to be better children of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, thou shalt not covet. And uh, uh, a lot of times I think we take it lightly and don't recognize enough uh, how we're tempted to sin by Satan and uh, coveting the sinful wrongdoings of the world yeah. and what everybody else is doing and everything. And uh, I want to uh, go ahead and read here in Romans, the seventh chapter, starting with the eighth verse to continue uh, through the 20th here of uh, thinking. But sin take up occasion by the commandment Roth in me all manner of concubines, for without the law sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died in the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. For sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do I allow not, for what I would that do I not, but what I hate that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it but sin that dwelleth in me. And when we're lost and everything and tempted of Satan and following the flesh and the world and what everybody else is doing, uh, uh, we don't think about what we're doing that much. And maybe our parents raised us to right from wrong, but uh, we're, we're still just following the world and the flesh and doing what we think is okay without even weighing it out a lot of times and uh, uh, letting the flesh have its way and uh, and uh, when we get born again in Christ Jesus if we go into church and worshiping the Lord and spirit and truth and reading the word and praying every day to stay in the will of God then we, we're going to stay uh, following the flesh and our own thinking and doings and the ways of the world because we're not growing 
And we owe it to the Lord Jesus Christ that saved us from hell and the lake of fire yeah. and brimstone, yeah. dying yeah. on the cross, yeah. shedding his precious blood uh, in our place uh, uh, that we could have eternal life yeah. trusting in him. And uh, uh, it, it's very serious business. We owe our Lord better of our lives to seek his uh, will and way and word and grow and mature in Christ Jesus and turn from our sinful ways, amen? And the 21st verse, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And, and this is pointing to a decision in Christ and the Holy Spirit being in your heart, uh, and, and you start facing the battle of uh, uh, flesh with the Spirit of God to do right and uh, uh, and so but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bring me into the captivity to the law of sin which is in my members O wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Amen? Yeah, and it's a battle uh, of serving the Lord, following the Spirit, and, and uh, uh, rebuking the flesh and the devil and coveting the sins of this world and, and the ways of the world. And uh, uh, it, it's a battle to do right in Christ yeah. Jesus. Amen? Yeah. And, and then we... We look at the Christian life of being born again and, and change from that sinful uh, way of life uh, to seek uh, God's way and walk in uh, His will and reading His Word and praying and growing in Christ Jesus. Uh, we follow the Spirit as chapter 8 here in Romans. Uh, I'd like to uh, read with you as well that I think is important to share. Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Amen. Yeah. We should be following the Spirit of God not yeah. covered in the sinful, lustful ways of the yeah. world yeah. and uh, uh, temptation of Satan. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. Yeah. For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And life and peace is trusting in Jesus, following Him, amen, drawing in Him uh, through prayer and reading the Word. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we're not debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, Covet not, amen? For if you live after the flesh, you shall die, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, amen? If we love the Lord, we're going to follow the Spirit of God. Pray and read His Bible and grow and go to church and worship service and worship in spirit and truth. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified 
could gather. Amen. And, and uh, if the people are really born again, they won't keep living in their sinful ways and following the ways of the world. The Lord chastises his own. He'll correct you. He won't let you stay there. And if they're content to stay there, there's a very good chance they didn't pray through and get saved. They're only fooling themselves and they're looking at their works of actions for their salvation and they're going to find out when they face God at the end of the way, he'll say, sorry, I never knew you. Amen. And uh, uh, I want to take you to Genesis 3, uh, 1 through 7, as we're all familiar with. And the Lord touched my heart on this. I preached uh, on this some years ago, but I felt led to preach again. But I let the Lord give it all to me new again. And uh, I feel like he gave me some better points of uh, explanation and expression. Uh, Genesis 3, 1 through 7, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God have said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God have known that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And what I want to bring out here, if you recognize it, uh, Satan is using great salesmanship upon Adam and Eve. And, and he he's... Uh, looking at this product of the tree of knowledge that God forbidden them to eat of and making it look so good in salesmanship and advertisement, uh, making them want to covet this product. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And, 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 uh, and so they, they fell for it, yes, it and, and they, they broke many commandments uh, in obeying Satan instead of God. If they loved God with all their heart, mind, soul, they wouldn't have failed to this temptation and wrongdoing. Amen? They're going to have no other gods before them. Amen? Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I want to take you to Matthew uh, 4th chapter and 1 through 11 that we're familiar with. And, and uh, the conniving Satan... Uh, he uses the same strategy on Jesus Christ here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And uh, notice this, chapter 4, 1 through 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. So Jesus didn't covet his salesmanship and temptation, and he rebuked old Satan uh, with the word of God. Amen? Yes. And uh, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set of him on the pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, Jesus coveted not his salesmanship and temptation and give him scripture to rebuke him. And again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things 
will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me? Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And again a third time, Jesus uh, coveted not his salesmanship and temptation and rebuked old Satan with the word of God. Amen? Amen. And then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. And I, I want you to know that Satan is using that same salesmanship and temptation pattern on every one of us all these generations of time. He ain't changed a bit. He wants to paint a beautiful picture, and everybody's doing it. And uh, just like drinking liquors and drugs and tattoos and dressing ungodly, uh, wild hairdos, and uh, they're shaving their heads and getting mohawk, uh, Indian hairdos, you name it. And uh, 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 everything goes today, you know. And uh, it's like there ain't no wrongdoing, just everybody's doing it and uh, uh, painting up a picture, uh, you might as well join in, but if we love Jesus, we ought to be laying on Jesus for advice and guidance, Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, if the world's doing it, is it right, Lord, and uh, uh, straighten our paths for the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Amen. And uh, I won't take you to Exodus 20th chapter, and I want us to uh, look at the Ten Commandments uh, that's brought out here uh, and recognize and, uh, and and God spake all these words saying Exodus 21 and I'm going to read through the 17th verse if y'all bear with me and uh, God spake all these words saying I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bond thou shalt have no other gods before me Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting an iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold them guiltless that take of his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, the manservant, nor the maidservant, nor the cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth to see and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. <coughs> and you take the seventh day, people didn't work uh, 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 and they didn't use their farm animals or nothing of the sort. And uh, But the Lord Jesus Christ changed that day of honor to the first day of the week, Sunday, by dying on the cross and uh, shedding his precious blood and was buried and resurrected on the first day of the week. And we're honoring a living Savior and honoring his sacrifice for you and me and the whole wide world to trust in him. And we owe him that honor, amen? And uh, we're to worship him in spirit and truth. And we go on to read here in the 12th verse of the 12th chapter of Exodus. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And we covet all this wrongdoing uh, in the flesh, following the flesh and temptation of Satan when, when you're lost, but when you get saved, uh, we, we shouldn't be following those ways, amen? The 17th verse, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. We should self the will of God, and he knows our needs, 
and he'll provide and take care of our needs and we need to learn to live by our wages Amen. and yeah. accept what we can afford in Christ Jesus and he will provide. Amen? And uh, not covet the ways of the world to seek and be like them. Amen? And uh, um, Matthew 16, 26 For what is a man profited if he shall give the gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul amen and uh, uh, a lot of times people are uh, not going to church they're not tithing and uh, uh, so forth and uh, they're they're using their money for their own interests and concerns and seeking to be rich and well off and have what their neighbors got and uh, and coveting uh, to their own will instead of seeking uh, and guidance of the Lord Jesus Christ to serve him and do right. Amen. Uh, let's go to Romans 3. Uh, and 10 through 18. I know I'm reading a lot, but there's a lot here to that needs to go across our minds and draw in the word of God and the faith of God and, and notice this uh, this uh, is uh, uh, of the lost and, and, and of the saved as well uh, that uh, note here in the 3rd chapter of Romans 3 10 as it is written there is none righteous no not one there is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after God they are all gone out of the way they are Together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open supplementary. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their way. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And, and that's more the lost people or backslidden Christians and uh, a, a born again believer that's following Christ uh, he should be laying on Jesus praying, reading the word and going yeah. to church worshiping the Lord yeah. the spirit and truth and, and uh, rebuking those kind of thoughts across their mind, temptation and covetousness and uh, uh, revenge is mine saith the Lord, amen a lot of times we won't get even with people which best leave things alone and let God take care of it. Amen. Uh, the 23rd verse here, uh, uh, chapter 3, For all of sin come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And uh, Hebrews 9, 22, For without the shedding of blood there is no redemption of sin. Amen. Whom God has set forth to be appropriation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and just fire him, which believeth in Jesus. And I just thank the Lord for dying on the cross, shed his precious blood, and dying in my place, saving my soul from hell and lake of fire. I just thank you for the Holy Spirit in my heart, leading yeah. guiding me all true, keeping me from uh, the ways of this evil world and Amen. keeping me in his will. I, I can't praise him enough and thank him enough. Yeah. He, he's truly the heavenly father, the spiritual father that loves us more than anyone. Amen. Yeah. We love our parents, but God Almighty loves us. I, I tell them 10,000 times more than our parents that love us. And... Uh, uh, God is so special. And uh, Psalms 101.3, I'm just reading part of it here. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. And uh, caution what we watch on TV and heavy violence, strong scare movies, invite evil spirits into our hearts and minds and watching pornography and strip dress movies and all this stuff is ungodly and we need to abstain from it. Amen. Uh, looking at Isaiah uh, 47th chapter 1 through 3, I want you to know, and uh, a lot of people may not agree with me 
of what I feel in my heart of expression here, but uh, I felt led to bring this out. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughters of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstone, grind mill, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers, and uh, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. And this is talking about uncovering our bodies and showing our nakedness and it like uh, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh. And maybe we wanna, uh, don't want to accept that or, or, or admit it, but I, I think God expects us today to cover our bodies yeah, yeah. down to our knees, uh, men and women. And, you know, uh, 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 women and men should dress covering their bodies, shorts to their knees, swimming suits, or, or nakedness, a lot of times to their bodies and on the beaches wearing bikinis and even men are dressing uh, uh, small short uh, like bikinis themselves. I mean, the swim suits they swim in and everything. And, and men, they go around bareback mowing their yards and everything. And uh, I, I, I tell you, uh, men should cover their bodies as they expect women to cover their bodies and uh, we should cover this nakedness uh, of our bodies and dress more uh, rightfully in the Lord. You take back in the Bible days uh, they they wore gowns and everything and uh, robes and all this stuff and uh, uh, a lot of people complain if they had to dress that way today but uh, uh, we, we can be a little more respectable about our dress and everything. Uh, uh, let's look at Corinthians, the uh, first Corinthians 6 chapter, and uh, we'll read to you here uh, 15 through 20. And, oh, I'm in the second Corinthians. Bear with me here a minute. Okay. And uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 20, notice this. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. Why know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body for two, saith he shall be one flesh, but he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Leave fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication saith against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And uh, we... We don't weigh out how we're living today and dressing and uh, everything. People going to these beaches and uh, their swimsuits, bikinis, and dressing half naked. And uh, it's no place for Christians. I, I tell you, it ain't no place for Christians. And, and men should cover their backs with t shirts and uh, shorts to their knees or, or dress pants and cover their uh, bodies and. and uh, uh, even the women like swimming. Uh, men could wear t-shirts and shorts to their knees, and women could even yeah. wear blouses and shorts to their knees as well for swimming. I mean, yeah. we should think more respectably for the Lord how we dress and are seen yeah. amongst yeah. others. Yeah. You know, you're married to your mates in marriage, and yeah. uh, you uncover your nakedness in relationship and all that to be showed to your mate not to be showed to the neighbor in the world uh, and uh, we're taking it lightly like it don't matter anymore and we owe God respect we owe our children respect men and women uh, shouldn't dress naked before their children children shouldn't dress naked before their parents and uh, 
you hear of parents having a relationship with their children. I mean, uh, people are not weighing out how they dress it before one another, and it's very important and serious matter uh, of concern. And you take, uh, 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 you may think I'm a little silly, but uh, pantyhose for women, uh, full length, like pantyhoses, and, uh, and now they're wearing something very similar to full length pantyhose for their pants that are skin tight the same way. And I don't think it looks respectable yeah. on women or dress. They shouldn't be letting themselves wear such or their children, uh, girls and all that. It's time to straighten up and dress right for the love of Jesus and uh, how we dress today. And uh, uh, some may think I'm outdated or uh, out of the way, but I, I think we owe God that respect. Amen. And uh, you take uh, King David and him with Bathsheba and everything. He is up on the roof looking down on Bathsheba, uh, bathing and everything, and he had adultery in his heart for her, and then he coveted her, and, and then he had her brought to him. Then he committed adultery with her, and she become pregnant with a baby. And, and to cover his tracks, he tried to get Uriah, her husband, to go to her on leave from war, and he's so concerned about the war and the soldiers to be back with them, he refused to go. And so uh, King David gave him a note to give the commander to put him on the front lines of the worst battle. Yeah. It cost him his life. And uh, same as stealing uh, uh, his wife from him and, and committing murder, having him put to death on the front line. Yeah. Uh, if he loved God with all his heart, mind, soul, he would overcome that temptation and lust and covetousness. And uh, he, he broke many commandments there. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we don't weigh out what we're doing. As God's word says, you break one commandment and you're guilty of all. That's how the avalanche of sin multiplies more and more uh, that it just grows. Amen. And, and we need to rebuke sin, temptation, and covetousness uh, of the devil and seek the will of God, praying and reading his word, and, uh, church and worship service in spirit and truth. Amen. Uh, let's look at Samuel uh, uh, 1, uh, 15th chapter uh, about King Saul and his covetousness. And Samuel said, Help the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. The, this is uh, 1 Samuel 15, 22. Uh, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams, is it not? Amen. And uh, he, he was coveting his own thinking instead of God's. And for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity and adultery. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he have also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. And so he, he was coveting his own thinking and coveting the people's thinking above God's thinking. Amen. And uh, uh, you can see where I'm coming from uh, on the subject of coveting. And uh, look how people go to church and they, they covet their money so they're robbing God of tithes and offerings. Yeah. Amen. And, and also, we don't realize it, but we're even coveting prayer life of praying for ourselves only and not thinking of others. Uh -oh. And we should be praying for the American military men and women, all branches of service serving our country for their safety and for their salvation. For doctors and nurses, dentists, farm and ambulance workers, policemen, state troopers, SWAT team, barbers, dentists, all risking their lives to help others uh, uh, and that they'll come to know the Lord Jesus Christ their Savior. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for Israel and uh, that he'll 
protect them with the mighty hand of God from threatening nations all around them, as well as America and all countries that uphold the ministry of God, and pray for people of all trades of life, the starving, hungry, homeless, those without food, clothing, shelter, and water, needing surgery, and uh, strung out on dope and drugs and busted homes and divorces and uh, uh, and blind and paralyzed, limbless and deformed, diseased and illnesses of all kinds. There's so much to pray about and uh, pray for, like the Ukraine country fighting for their freedom from Russia uh, and uh, uh, we we need to be praying about our sin temptations and all that we face to overcome and be in the will of God and uh, put on the whole armor of God and uh, pray to be uh, in the will of God and peace of God and uh, pick up the cross and follow him and deny ourselves. Amen. There's so much to pray about. And if we expect God to answer our prayers and needs, we we got to thank others' concerns as well. And showing love in that obedience and respect, God is going to answer our prayer needs more sooner. Amen. And I want you to look at John uh, 15th chapter 1 through 5. And uh, John 15, 1 through 5. I am the true vine and my father is the husband of Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that he may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, itself did abide in the vine. No more can ye accept, ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Amen. We got to learn to lean on Jesus, trust in Him, pray and read the Bible, worship Him uh, in church every opportunity that we can, and stay in the will and blessing of God. And uh, if you'll bear with me, I'd like to read on further here in the 15th chapter of John that I think we need to hear and understand. The sixth verse If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them to the far, and they are burnt. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my command, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commands, abide in his love. These things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I've loved you. Greater love have no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not sirs for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth. But I've called you friends for all things that I've heard of my Father I've made known unto you. I love this verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask the Father, my name he may give it you. Amen. Amen. These things I command you that you love one another. Amen. And I want to take you to Philippians, the fourth chapter. And... uh, And I'm going to read 6 through 9. Philippians 4, 6 through 9. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen? And... uh, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard 
and seeing him may do, and the God of peace shall be with you. And the more we lean on God, read his word and pray and go to worship services and lean on God and all decisions, uh, we'll have perfect peace with God. Amen. Things will uh, be more blessed in our lives. Uh, I, Isaiah 26, 3. Yes, sir. I love and uh, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in yeah. thee. Amen. And if we're praying and reading our Bibles and going to worship service, just including God in all decisions all through the day, you don't even have to shut your eyes, just ask him to help you do Amen. all things. Yeah. He wants to be your best friend, and he, he is if you only recognize it. He wants to be included in everything you do. He loves you more than you, you can yes, ever Lord, understand. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, I love Psalms 100. Yeah. It's short and uh, such a blessing. Um, Psalms 100. One through five. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his past. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, to the courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. Amen. And uh, uh, also, uh, I... We need to remember our country in prayer that has come back to God. And yeah. uh, you take this presidential administration, the, they're uh, uh, guilty of treason and traitorism to our Constitution flag and Christian freedom. And we need to pray that our Supreme Court judges, U.S. Congress, military leaders will stand up to this administration and arrest them for all this wrongdoing. Yeah and put them in prison where they belong. And uh, if we'll pray hard enough, uh, God will give them courage and a weakness to do the right thing before it's too late, I pray. But the coming of the Lord may be nearer than we know and all this ungodliness will be fulfilled. And we'll just have to trust in the Lord to face all this with faith and trust that our, uh, he'll see us through. And looking at... Uh, First John, uh, finishing up this message, uh, first chapter, and uh, five through ten. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. If we say that we have not sin, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. And that finishes up this message tonight. And I... Hope I haven't wore you out or bored you, but I feel like it was something that needed to be heard. I ain't got a memory like a lot of people to brief things, and uh, I do the best I can. I love Jesus. And...